Okay, so Apple recently launched their iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max, but how much different they are actually from iPhone 14 Pro or iPhone 15 Pro lineup? So in terms of dimensions, though, if you look at, then it's barely any difference. Like there is a tiny bit of difference, like the iPhone 16 Pro Max is more taller because it ha does have a bigger screen. It's a 6.9 inch screen instead of a 6.7 inch screen. Same goes for the Pro models, 6.3 inch versus 6.1 inches of the older models. But if you look at the weight of the phone, then the iPhone 15 Pro Max is actually lighter than the iPhone 16 Pro Max. And they both are lighter than the iPhone 14 Pro Max by a lot. Now, even though both the iPhone 15 Pro and the 16 Pro lineup has titanium frame, but this one, the newer one, is actually titanium grid 5, which is much more stronger, but also it's a polished one. So it looks more glossier. At the same time, the front glass actually has a better ceramic silt, which has 50% more drop resistance according to Apple compared to the last year's one. And the same thing can be said about the display brightness. The typical brightness or high brightness manually or automatic high brightness, 1000 nits and 2000 nits respectively. It's similar on all of them. But yes, because of the newer bezels, like thinner bezels, the iPhone 16 Pro Max actually has more better screen to body ratio than the older models. So it's 91.4% screen to body ratio compared to 89.8 .8 of the 15 Pro Max. The biggest change is actually in the chipset department, definitely. From the A17 Pro and a little bit of heating issues, this is gonna be a much better experience because they have used a much more bigger and better cooling system to avoid that thing. At this time though, this is also a 3NM based processor like the A17 Pro, but it's still having the same setup as Apple A17 Pro. Two performance cores and four efficiency cores. According to Apple, this is about 15% faster in terms of CPU performance compared to A17 Pro. But the storage configurations hasn't changed at all. But do keep this in mind because the iPhone 15 Pro lineup also supports Apple intelligence, just like the 16 Pro lineup, all of them has 8GB of RAM at the minimum. Whereas the older iPhone 14 Pro Max actually had 6GB of RAM, so that doesn't support Apple intelligence. But if you look at the 14MP of main camera Apple is talking about a lot, it hasn't changed at all. Whether you talk about the sensor size, which is one over one point. 8 inches to the aperture. It is still f1.8. And the same thing can be said about the 5x optical zoom. It's still a 12 megapixel unit and it does have the same exact aperture as the 15 Pro Max's 5x camera. And on the 14 Pro lineup, it was actually 3x. So the zoom range was less. The ultra wide angle camera is a new one. It's a 48 megapixel one compared to 12 megapixel on both of them, the older models. But the aperture is still the same, f2.2. But in the video capturing experience, there is a new thing. It has 4K 128fps recording, which is not available on the 15 Pro lineup or 14 Pro lineup at all. So this is a big thing. Plus, it also does come with a new camera control button. Now, this button, but it's a touch and pressure sensitive button. Now, this will allow you to quickly jump to camera, quickly take a photo, or if you press and hold, it will take a video. Plus, you can double press it to open up a small menu where you can zoom in or out by sliding on top of that white button. This is a pretty cool thing, but this is the only coolest thing out of everything that they launched. They didn't even talk about the selfie camera though. It's still similar to what it was in the iPhone 14 Pro Max even. But the Wi-Fi 7 standard is a big upgrade over the Wi-Fi 6C, but only if you have a Wi-Fi 7 supported router in your home. Other than that, the dynamic outlet is identical to the 14 Pro Max, so there is no change at all. Now this time though, the charging has changed slightly. 25 watt fast wireless charging using MagSafe compared to 15 watt on the older models. But it also does support Qi2 standard just like the older model. So that's 15 watts for every other wireless charges. The battery capacity upgrade is there by about 6% jump over the last year's model, which had already a great battery life. So this is the longest battery life on an iPhone according to Apple. And it does come with new colors, but with the same price tag. So it's black titanium, white titanium, natural titanium, and desert titanium. But the standard Pro model will start at $1,000, but it comes with only 128 gigabyte base model. So overall, what you're getting with the newer phone is slightly bigger screen, slightly thinner bezels, glossier frame, a new camera controls button, slightly better display protection, newer colors, better thermal efficiency, slightly faster chipset, a newer 40 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, 5x zoom camera on all the pros, and 4K 120 FPS. 
plus better microphones, which is really good for video capturing experience where you can edit the audio of the primary subject or the background. But other than that, there's nothing new in it. It's the same design, same thing again. Let me know about your thoughts in the comment section below from which phone you are upgrading to the iPhone 16 Pro or Pro Max, or you're still gonna hold on to your iPhone Pro model this year too. And yes, if you want, you can get some crazy cool wallpapers up on my website, a link down below. Until the next one, bye and take care.